Did you know that you can import any location on Earth to your Rhino mod? This workflow is completely free and you can truly pick and choose any place on Earth, whether it's a city, village, desert, or even a mountain, and bring these models with textures into Rhino. If you follow the whole video step by step, you'll be able to do this yourself. The first thing you need to do is go to blender.org and click on download. Uh, make sure to choose the right installation type. If you're using Windows, click on the first button and if you're using Mac, click on the button below. Make sure to install Blender, start the program and you should see an interface similar to this one. Next step, go to this link and download Blossom for Blender add-on. This add-on will allow you to pull information from OpenStreetMap or Google Maps, but keep in mind that the resolution of real-world terrain data is 30 meters. Uh, this add-on is free, but if you'd like to support the development of this plugin, you can donate any amount here. In order to download it, just type 0, click on the button below, put your email, type 0 again and click on get. And lastly, click on download. The download file will be a zip file, so simply go to edit, preferences, click on add-ons, and there's a small arrow here in the top right corner, click on it and choose install from disk. Go to the folder where you downloaded this zip file and click on install from disk. This will install the Blossom add-on and here inside the settings we just need to modify a couple of things. The first thing is the folder location where all of the downloaded terrain data will be stored. Make sure to pick the appropriate folder here. And the second thing here is we need to put the Google 3D Tiles key. This step is important if you want to use terrain data from Google Maps, but if you just want to import terrain from OpenStreetMaps, you don't have to do this step. Here's a comparison of the same location and it's quite obvious that you would get much more details if you use Google Maps data. But again, that's going to be up to you. To get your API key, go to this link, fill out information that is required, and you need to set up your account. This is just uh, Google's way of making sure that you're not a spam, so you need to put your billing information. Uh, but the process is quite simple. You also need to answer a couple of questions. And once you answer all of those, you can pretty much copy my answers here. And then simply uh, click on next, next, next. You'll get this link. And this is the API key. Simply copy that. Then make sure to go to APIs and services and make sure that uh, Map Tiles API is enabled. So this needs to be enabled in order for this to work. Then go to Blender, copy this link, and you're all set. Make sure to set up the proper uh, folder structure. And the last thing is that you want to exit your Blender and then uh, open it again and make sure that the Blossom plugin is actually turned on. If there is a tick mark, it means that it's on and you're all set. Okay, so now everything is ready and we can import some terrain data. The first thing here that I'm going to do in Blender, I'm going to delete these elements. We don't need them. And I'm going to go to this arrow here. You can either click here or you can uh, click N key on the keyboard. That's going to open up this menu and you will see the Blossom add-on here. So we need to click on Select, and that's going to open up the browser. And this browser is going to allow us to pick and choose the location that we want to import. Uh, let's go, for example, United States, and let's go to Chicago, and I'm going to pick some area here. Keep in mind that you don't want to have very big import uh, location right away because it may be heavy on the system. So first I would try with importing some smaller geometry, for example, just one city block, and then you can expand after that because you need to see how much time it would take to import. When you click show selection uh, rectangle, it's going to show you this image. So you can now, of course, zoom out or zoom in wherever you want. For example, let's uh, go in this area. Let's again click on show selection rectangle. And uh, if you want to see a little bit better, like what the buildings are, you can also click here, ArcGIS satellite data. When you click there, you're going to see which buildings are actually located in the area and if you want to import them. So I'm going to pick, let's say, some area around here, uh, this city block here. Let's go all the way until here. And let's go until this street. I think this will be enough. You'll see here the area size. So now it's 0 0.5 point 0 0.4 kilometers. And all you need to do uh, here is to click on copy. So you click copy, that's going to copy these coordinates. And now you go back to Blender and you click on paste. And when you click on paste, it's going to memorize those coordinates. And now the next thing you need to do is click on import. But before clicking on import, make sure that here you have Google 3D tiles selected because that's how you want to import uh, Google Maps data. If you want to just use OpenStreetMap, you can do so as well. But keep in mind that the quality and the details are not going to be the same. Google 3D tiles uh, and the level of details. This is where you determine how detailed you want the model to be. I usually would go with buildings with more details. This is the most the most detailed model that you can choose from. But if you're choosing like very big area, try to 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 kind of play with this because if you have like let's say the whole city, 
uh, it's not going to be able to import all of that. It's going to take too much time and resources on your system. So uh, if you're choosing some smaller area, you can uh, do the details. But if you're choosing the, uh, the bigger area, I would keep away from having all of the full details. So let's click buildings with more details and uh, keep everything the same and simply click on import. Okay, so the import process is done. Now, if I zoom in, you're going to see that we have the geometry up above. If you're, if you're seeing this clipping, it means that we need to, to modify the view a little bit. So I'm going to click here on the view and I'm going to change the, the end from 1000 to let's say 10,000. That's going to allow me to see everything inside of the scene. All right. So now this is the model imported from Google Maps and you'll be able to see if the textures are there. If you go here and you click on texture. And this is going to allow you to see that we have the textures inside of the model. However, this is in Blender, so we're still not in Rhino. So the trick here, the key is that you need to somehow export this file with materials. And they tried many different workflows. And the best one that I found was to export this as FBX file. You can actually import that FBX file later on in Rhino or any other tools. But in order to export them, first you need to fix the materials. So now if you click here, if I uh, bring this window up and if I go here to the shader, when I click on this, you'll see that we have the shader that looks like this. This is essentially the material. If you go here, uh, let me just move my window a little bit here. So if you click here on the material, you'll be able to see that we have lots of materials here and every single material looks like, looks like this. So however, this material is not going to be recognized uh, as it is in Rhino, so we need to use one script to optimize this material and to actually create material that's going to be recognizable later on with the FBX export. However, we're not going to do this manually because this would take forever because we have thousands of materials here, as you can see. So what we're going to do, we're going to use a Python script. You'll be able to download this Python script in our free community and the link is below in the description. Uh, this script was initially created by Frederick Lindgren, so I want to give him credits for creating this script. But I slightly modified it so we get a little bit better materials than the original script. So now I'm going to uh, expand my window here. There's a small sign here that allows you to move uh, to open another window essentially. So I'm going to use that and I'm going to modify here from the shader. I'm going to pick Python. Uh, there is a Python console that you can use to produce this result. Again, I'm going to move my uh, window a little bit here. And now I'm going to copy that script. This is what the script uh, looks like. So I'm going to select all, control C, and I'm going to click here on the bottom in the Python console. I'm going to say control V to paste, and I'm going to click enter twice. Uh, uh, at the same time, watch what happens here with this uh, area here. So I'm going to type enter twice. And you'll see that all of the materials are going to be modified. And now you see this uh, window that I showed you for the shader. Now it's modified a little bit. So we have the actual uh, principal BCDF material here. And this is the material that's going to work with our export with FBX. However, this is not uh, the end. Now we need to export this. So let me again move my window here. We need to go to the file external data. And then you need to click here unpack resources. Very important step. And the first one, you can say use files in current directory. So make sure that your Blender file is saved. Uh, you have you have it in a special folder. Make sure you save it and then you click here, use files in the current directory. And that's going to export all of those materials. And you can see here on the bottom that it says uh, it's saved a packed file. Okay. So now I'm going to go to that folder. This is what the folder looks like. So we have the demo, which is the name of the file. And then we have the textures. So all of these textures are located here and you can see that they are all exported. Now comes the final part. We need to export this file. So I'm going to, I'm going to click on it, file, export, FBX. I'm actually going to save this file directly in the textures folder just in case. So I'm going to double click and I'm going to leave the name de uh, demo FBX. I'm going to select visible because that's what I want to export. And you can pretty much keep everything the same and click on export FBX. Now let's go to Rhino and I'm simply going to drag and drop that file. So this is our folder, if you remember, inside of the textures we had, when you scroll all the way on the bottom, you have demo FBX file that we just exported from Blender. I simply drag and drop here and I'm going to click your import file. When I click OK, that's going to bring this box and you essentially want to click on these two. So prompt to scale on import and map FBX uh, Y to Rhino Z. Click OK and that's going to bring the file into Rhino. 
a few moments later all right so here is the model in rhino it just got imported so i'm going to go to shaded mode just to kind of show you what we have here so once you zoom here when you click on any of these objects you'll notice that they are open meshes and if you go to the for example arctic mode you'll be able to see how this would look like uh, when rendered in clay mode of course and let's say that you want to render this with v-ray uh, what you can do you can simply you know choose your angle in this case i have some kind of angle i prepared from before and you can uh, simply you know click on render and that's going to give you the model with materials as you can see here right so i was testing here to see what would be the best angle and that's how you would be able to create these kind of effects and of course you can use photoshop to enhance the quality of the image further and then produce uh, these kind of results that i showed you at the beginning of the video and now go to this video and check out some of the newest feature in rhino 8 see you there